Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing the advanced lineup construction video a little earlier this week, only because uh, I'm not going to have time to do both the betting breakdown and the lineup construction video. And I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that I got this done. So again, the uh, betting breakdown might have to suffer. Uh, not, I don't know if I'll be able to get to that, but I think it's definitely important to do it for the do the lineup construction video. Um, although, I will tell you, I don't know what I can do about this slate. This is one of the hardest, the most ridiculous slates I have ever seen because of the way DraftKings pricing works, right? So, so, so... DraftKings prices their fighters between 9400 pretty much and eight, you know, an 80, whatever, 8100 for the favorites. And the reverse on the other sides have it, you know, add up to 16 to each. Regardless of what these fighters' odds are to win. Um, and what you end up getting usually is a good kind of distribution, like like it's like minus five to ones up at 9400. Then, you know, get some two to ones that say 8,900 or 9,000, whatever. But this particular card, the biggest favorite on the card is like two to one. So you end up with these ridiculous prices on these on these marginal favorites. Um, as a result, what that means also is that you have ridiculously cheap prices on marginal underdogs. So you end up with this incredibly impossible slate to figure out from a math perspective. Now, I shouldn't say that because what I'm going to do is basically just let the math kind of figure this out because I can't make heads or tails of this. I, I instinctively, I imagine that a couple of things. Number one, that the optimal lineup uh, will end up leaving a lot of money on the table. And also... I'm going to predict that the optimal lineup will not be had by anybody. <clears throat> uh, I, you know, obviously, I have no way to know that, and I have no math to support that, but that's just what I feel. Um, it's that it's that difficult, and we're really going to put our 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 you know our tools to the test here, see if we can't make heads or tails of this. Um, I went through some of this when I talked about the uh, you know the. Uh, the good plays video on Thursday, yesterday, but this is what our lineup's going to look like. I really don't know. Like, for example, the first thing I did when I built my, I built the 5,000 lineups out of my projections and I set a minimum of 45,000. So if I got to these lineups that were like 45, two or whatever it is, I would have them. Like, for example, like the first lineup listed is 49, one which you don't see all that often. The third one listed is 48.9. You know what I mean? Like this is almost, this is, this is really, really strange to see. Um, so we're going to just spend the entire time on lineup construction here and just, just letting the Sims kind of do their thing. And this is definitely a slate where I'm probably not going to look at who I have. Um, Cause once I start putting my biases into this slate, I know I'm going to be doing it. Um, the other thing I might do is I might force uh, money to be left on the table in at least some of them um, to test my theory, to test my theory of, of that. I think it's going to be less on, left on the table. I just think it is. Um, but the one thing I do want to highlight, I want to highlight, and this is, this is going to be hyperbole. I, I want to discuss what I think is might be the best GPP play of the year. Um, and I, I, so last year, the best GPP play of the year, which I said beforehand was, was Marab, was Marab against Peter Young. He was 7,400 or whatever it was. And it wasn't as though I thought he was going to win. I just knew that when he did win, he was just going to score through the roof and it was ridiculous. So that was that. But this is a very important thing to bring up. Now, again, when I say it's the best GPP play of the year, I'm not saying that it's going to win, okay? But it's extremely instructive. And there are a couple of assumptions that we need to make 
okay? So the first assumption that we're going to need to make uh, are these ownerships, right? So Carl Williams, we are going to have us believe that uh, his ownership is going to be 35%. And when you think about it, it makes sense in a way. I mean, he's a great play. He has like incredible takedown upside. He can get nine takedowns and Justin Taffa hasn't really shown that he can grapple at all. And in a slate, which is kind of, you know, bereft of upside, you know, Carl Williams is going to look like a good play, right? So he, if he's 35% owned, I would like to say that Justin Taffa, not only is he plus 150 money line at what price? At 6,900. But he's also... Uh, what is this? Plus two, two hundred or so, plus two twenty inside the distance at sixty nine hundred. Okay, so if you have a sixty nine hundred dollar fighter who is plus two twenty inside the distance, it's already just one of the best plays of the year. But when you factor in the assumption that Carl Williams is also going to be thirty five percent owned. So you're getting leverage against that. I'm sorry, but that's got to be the best play. Okay? To the point where these ownerships have to be ridiculous. How is this the case? That you have a fighter, Justin Taffa, who is 6,900 at plus 160 to win, plus 220 inside at 16% ownership. I mean, I'll tell you why. Because people, you know, want to play Carl Williams, but that's not the point. So um, that's the first thing. That Justin Taffa... I am claiming is the best GPP play of the year. Um, and the, 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 the cool thing about, about saying that is that it doesn't matter whether he wins or loses, Lo wins or loses, because I know I'm right. <laughs> because you play this out like, uh, you know, 100,000 times with these ownerships and this inside the distance line, he is going to be, he is the best GPP play of the year. And if you understand that, uh, you're, you're well on your way to be much better at not only UFC uh, G, uh, MM, uh, DFS, but also other sports like where you have these direct leverages like tennis, things like that. Um, okay, so let's get back to the, to the lineup construction. Let's uh, see what we did. So the first thing we did was we ran 5,000 lineups and then it's all about how you rank these things. So we're, again, we're starting with this MMA default ranking. Which again, uh, this is now again, it's it's kind of a misnomer because even though it says default, it's like not the default bill by any stretch of the imagination. Um, like when you get into what the MMA default setting is, it is the riskiest, most upside laden, you know, lack of ownership ridden lineup construction there is. It, it you see that percentile 0.99. You know, that, that's mean that all they care about is, is, the, is the 99th percentile of these lineups. And then, and then you also, uh, you, you subtract 0.3 times the sum of the adjusted ownership, okay? So this type of build is the most risky type of build, but it also is the build that allows you to, uh, you know, most likely avoid dupes, okay? Um, However, I think that on a card like this, I don't think we need to do it. I think there's just so much weirdness with these lines and with these pricings, pricing models, that you don't even have to do that. Okay. So the next thing I would do, and I, I, and I usually say, you know what, I'm going to put like 50 lineups of the MMA default in just to just for funsies. I'm not even going to do that. Okay. We're going to go straight to the next level where we get to MMA Sim Diversity 10. So this is the pure kind of GPP, again, type build that Saber Sim has to offer. Um, when you get into it, you'll see, you click the eye. And now we're not even, you know, doing the 90th percentile outcome. It's just plus 0.8 times sum of projections. But then you still ding, the, ding them for ownership a little bit. And you use 100 times Sim Optimum. So now you're getting, you know, these are your, you know, 
good plays, I guess that's the best way to describe this. Um, so uh, that's one thing you could do. You could just put these lineups in kind of as is and uh, be well within your rights to do that. Before you did that, you might want to consider increasing your min uniques and especially on a car, which I, again, I think is just so wild as far as the way the optimals can be constructed, think that that's probably a good idea. So let's, let's, what we do is you go to min uniques and you go to the max min uniques you can until it yells at you. So, okay. So now you can't even build 150 with four min uniques. So what you do is you go back to three, which is the minimum amount, and then you do one more. So min uniques two would be the default, not the default would be, I don't know, where you would start off with your build. So I would start by putting, you know, like 50 lineups, I guess, right? Um, 50 lineups with the Sim Diversity 10 settings. So you can do that a number of ways. You could save it to its own file. But let's see if we can get away with just using the old, our old, uh, whatchamacallit, our, uh, Uh, favorites tab here. So now we save these to the favorites. So you see, oh, I had 150. See, I did it again. It's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do 150. So we want I want to erase these. Clear favorites. Okay. So let's only do 50 from the sim diversity team. Now the and what we'll do is we'll put that in the um favorites. And there you go. Right. The next thing I want to do is I want to run a contest. So what we do is we pull up our contests and we right click here and let's just to add contest sim. And we're not going to use Saber Sim ownerships. We're going to use our actual build as the field lineups to compare our lineups to. Okay. I just feel as though this is a better representation than just trusting the Saber Sim ownerships. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's, for all of them, we'll do that. So now we'll hit this, we will hit run contest sims. Run contest sims. And then we will see what we get. We're gonna violate a rule, by the way, that I have. Um, in a minute when we run our last 50 lineups. Um, and that is, I usually don't like to look and see what I have, but in this case we will. All right, so we ran our contest sims and we're gonna look at our drop downs. Okay, UFC throwdown, risk adjusted ROI, we'll sort by that. 50 lineups, uh, top 50, makes sense. I don't really care who we have. Min Uniques 2 makes some sense, though. So we could do the same thing. Uh, we'll go Min Uniques 4, maybe. So then we'll go back to Min Uniques 2 because it yelled at us there. And then we will save those. Well, no. What we're going to do is we're going to save this to the favorites. Okay. Um, now... The next thing that I said I wasn't going to do, that I think I'm going to do, is I said that I wasn't going to see who I had. Um, and the reason why I'm going to see who I have is, unfortunately, there 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 are two fighters which I'm just going to have to have a lot of, and and one of them is 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 Justin Taffa. I just I just can't not not do it. You know what I mean? It's just too good of a play. Um, even if I'm wrong a little bit on the ownership, I mean it's just ridiculous. So I'm thinking of the next 50 lineups to just lock in top. I think that makes perfect sense. The other thing I would think about is whether I would uh, use those 50 lineups to limit my salary. Um, the other thing I might think about is whether to use this 50 to limit my, my ownership. And maybe do some geo mean filtering. 
But again, I just think that so much, it's so much nonsense already that I don't think you even need to do that. Um, so let's for the next, I guess, we don't even need to do anything, right? We're still in the contest, Sim. Why don't we just lock in Tafa, just like this, we'll lock him in. Now all these are Tafas, and we'll just play 50 Tafas. So that was the one thing. But the other thing is that I also wanted to get a bunch of, uh, whatchamacallit, of, uh, of Amanda Hebas. Um, because I just I'm getting way too much rose and I just I just I just feel like that's mission. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build, I guess 20 with um with rows first. So let's get I mean uh, without rows. So where is uh he bus? So we'll lock in he bus. And we'll build, so we'll build 20 with, uh, with, uh, whatchamacallit, with uh, Tafa and Hebas. Save this to the favorites. We'll build, um, Let's unlock key boss. What else do we want to do with these Tafa lineups? We could do 30 more, right? We could do 30 more with and, and allow Rose if we want. But but if we allow Rose, I mean she's gonna be pretty pretty chalky. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna limit that to uh, maybe to MMA default. So let's do this MMA default. Where is Rose? Rose in here? Where is Rose? Uh, I want, uh, we can, well, we're not even getting Rose in this spot. So instead of the MMA default, we'll do the, um, we'll do some geo mean filtering. So we'll geo mean filter down to like 19 or something for these, for these others. Now we can use some Rose. So let's, let's, let's play 20. With Rose, but not enemy default, just Sim Diversity 10. Boom. And then through the remaining 10, we'll just we'll just play uh, just 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 10 randoms. Where we could use Rose if we want, but if we don't get to her, we don't get to them. And this one, you know what, maybe we'll, yeah, this is actually fine. Okay, so let's save these. Let's just make sure, see if we have 150. Do we have 150? We have, oh, we have 128. So we have some dupes, right? Um, we do have some dupes. And the thing is that we do have a lot of, of, uh, of Nama units here. Um, and so of these other 22, other 22, we probably should do no rows and we should probably do no Daria, you know, just to whatever. And should we, should we play 20 more Tafas? I mean, I have no problem with that. I mean, the other guys that I thought about earlier that I liked were, were these guys. So maybe more Aaron's or Severino. So we have 22 lineups that we need to fill here. Let's just keep playing the Tafas. I, I don't, you know, this is a, maybe a stupid take, I guess, but I don't know. So let's do 22 lineups with um, no Daria, no Rose. 
Yeah, we'll just play these, okay? So let's add these to the favorites and let's see now what we have. Now we have 149, this one lineup. All right, we'll fix that later. But this is that that's that's but this is what we're doing. We're really going heavy on the top of here. Okay. Um, and I, I think it, I think it's healthy. I really, really do. I think it's a very, very strong play. Um, some guys that were also really, really light on, which is gonna be really scary, but I don't know, I don't care. Is is Billy Quarantillo? We're very, very light on him. Very light on the Severino is very, very light on Aaron's too. I think both those are probably pretty decent plays, but this is the the road we're traveling. Okay, so much Zalal, wow, that's pretty uh, that's pretty insane. Um, but that's where we are. So, if you wanted to tweak, you could. If you wanted to do the same thing with your favorites, you could. But I guess this is just what we've decided what we're doing on this particular occasion. Um, we missing anything? Do we, do we forget to leave money on the table? Something like that? Do we have too much Daria? I don't know. Maybe we'll do the same exact concept, same exact thing once projections update. But this is what I want. I want 50 Sim Diversity 10s. I want 50 Sims. And then I want the rest like tough i just think it's a tremendous all right that will do it uh this was shorter than i thought it would be but that's it good luck everybody